Linux in the current year is absolutely not perfect. I know, absolute heresy. Nobody has ever said this. And we can talk about things like how there is a lot of developers, a lot of programmers, but not a lot of designers. And we get some kind of funky looking desktops and funky looking applications that don't really make that much sense. We can talk about things like driver and hardware support. We can talk about how HDR is still never going to be ready. Or we can talk about how we are in the middle of a transition between two display server stacks. But don't let anybody tell you that Linux is not getting better and that it used to be better in the past because it wasn't. This is a post from the Ubuntu forums on June 15th, 2010 by Intel91. Netflix in Ubuntu, no native method. I was wondering if anyone has found any other ways of watching Netflix Instant on Ubuntu. Netflix Instant is what Netflix used to call their streaming service while they still did the DVD rental. Other than loading up a virtual Windows machine and watching it like that, which takes up a lot of space. If not, I have found a new method of doing it that only requires about 25 megabytes of space instead of an entire operating system. I'd rather not mention the method until I hear back if there are other ways and until I've positively tested it on another console. If there are no other good methods, I'll post up a tutorial today or tomorrow depending on if slash when I have internet. Now, I know Netflix is still not perfect on Linux. You can't stream to its maximum potential, but you can use it. That wasn't always the case. There was a time where you couldn't use Netflix and various other DRM streaming services, and that's exactly it. DRM was the problem. So there was a time where you had to use Google Chrome, not Chromium, specifically Google Chrome. And up until Firefox 49, you couldn't watch Netflix in Firefox. If you wanted to do that, what you would do is you'd actually run the Windows version of Firefox through Wine because it needed the Silverlight plugin and Silverlight only functioned on Windows. Eventually, Google acquired Widevine and a bunch of DRM services started adopting Widevine instead and Widevine works on basically everything. So nowadays, it's not really a problem. There was an earlier period where Netflix was using Flash, and during that time, everything was working just fine on Linux. The problem, though, is Flash is terrible, and nobody should be using it. When they dropped it, that's when things went bad, and the only way to stream Netflix on Linux was a Windows virtual machine. At least that's what people thought. So... None that I'm aware of, and I've been paying attention to this issue. I look forward to seeing your workaround. I've found nothing that works. Would love to hear your idea. Now, you may have seen me tweet about this idea because the idea here is absolutely ridiculous, but it did work. So, sorry it took me so long to reply. It took me so long to get internet again, but I won't go into that. Anyways, after playing around a bit more, I realized this method is really only suitable as a plugin for a media center like Boxy. The reason is, is it inherently has a media center feel because it was designed with a 10 foot UI for the Wii. The method is emulating the Wii on Linux with Dolphin, then running a 20 megabyte trim Netflix ISO, adding up to 25 megabytes total. Not a great workaround, but a small one. There are controller problems as well in that it likes using the Wiimote, however, I'm not going to call it here. And if anyone else is interested, then perhaps someone will create a boxy plugin out of this concept. I'm working on a way to run it natively in Firefox, and believe it or not, but with today's Moonlight update, it may be working a bit more optimistic. I'm getting further than ever before with it. Now, Moonlight was an open source re-implementation of Silverlight that worked on Linux. The problem though, is it never really picked up enough to become a thing that you could actually use. The Wii on the other hand, this was a solution that actually worked. But solution might be a bit of a stretch. Um, this doesn't really look deserving of the solve tag. So why couldn't you just use a Windows VM? And you absolutely could. You could run a Windows XP, Windows Vista, or Windows 7 VM perfectly fine in something like VirtualBox, for example, and this would work. It had a big problem, though. The size of running a VM. Assuming you went with the lower end of that spectrum, which makes the most sense to do, you'd need about 10 gigabytes of dedicated space just for a VM to run Netflix. 
And while nowadays 10 gig isn't really that big of a deal, I can spin up a bunch of those VMs and not really care about them. I've got a bunch right now that I'm just not using. But back then, 10 gig was a lot of space. Yes, you could buy a one terabyte hard drive, but a lot of systems, especially OEM systems, didn't have those. They had maybe a 500 gig hard drive. And if the system was a couple of years old, maybe like three, four, five years old, you might not even have 200 gigs yet. Sure, if Netflix was super important to you, you could absolutely do it. But you could also just not do it and acquire your media in a another fashion that doesn't require 10 gigabytes of dedicated space. Honestly, I'm really impressed this worked full stop. 2012 DRM is nothing like DRM today. It was a lot easier to circumvent. Now, as for Netflix on the Wii, it was actually available in two separate forms. It was firstly available as a game disc that you could actually get Netflix to send you. They would just send you a disc that had Netflix installed. This would work up until about 2014 or so. And then following that, it was available on the Wii Shop channel. If you want to know more about the Netflix Wii disc, I'll leave a video in the description down below. It's actually a really interesting story. Now, this was not the only dumb solution on this thread to get Netflix working on Linux. I found a method to watch Netflix streaming movies in Ubuntu. It doesn't solve the DRM issue, but it does solve my issue, which was that I wanted to watch streaming Netflix movies on my Ubuntu desktop in VLC without using VMware or VirtualBox. The short story is that I used the Play On Media Server software from Media Mall Technologies running on a Windows XP PC as sort of a DRM proxy. It's not free, but its cost is reasonable. And there's a 14 day trial license so you can test to see if it works for you. I mount the UPnP multimedia file shared from the Play On server to my Ubuntu desktop via the DJ mount command, then I I browse and play my Netflix movies in VLC. Basically, creating like a middleman so Netflix thinks the DRM is being met and then you just go and do whatever you want with the media. Something that you probably can't do today, but once again, 2012 DRM was a little bit more lacking. But hey, eventually we kind of moved up in the world and started doing something sort of Linux, but sort of not really. So a few days ago, Netflix started rolling out their Android streaming app. I haven't had a chance to try it yet, but has anyone thought to try to use the Droid SDK and the Netflix app on Ubuntu? Basically emulating Android to go and watch Netflix. This actually wasn't that ridiculous of an idea. And nowadays is what a lot of people do when they want to go and play mobile games on their desktop. But you know, it wouldn't be Linux if someone didn't suggest something equally as stupid as where we started. Kind of a thread hop, but I know there was the PCSX2 method that was kicking around on Reddit for a while. It only works on paper as far as I know, but has anyone gotten a proof of concept off the ground? So, like with the Wii method, people were suggesting, hey, maybe we could run Netflix on the PS2 through PCSX2. In case you didn't know, there was actually a Netflix disc for the PS2. It didn't work in every region, but it was a thing that was available. And theoretically, it should have worked. I don't know if anyone actually got it working, but there was no reason why it shouldn't work. And then finally, on December 30th of 2012, we finally got to a browser-based solution. Not a good browser-based solution, but a solution nonetheless. There is a new Netflix desktop app that runs under Wine in Ubuntu. It is available from Launchpad repository here. Now, I don't know why they link to the person's like regular profile page, but the app they're talking about is this one right here. This is the one I briefly mentioned earlier. Netflix Desktop provides a convenient tool that downloads and installs all of the components necessary to run Netflix Watch instantly under Wine, including the Windows version of Mozilla Firefox and Microsoft Silverlight v4. The project package also includes some convenient settings to integrate Netflix into Firefox in such a way that everything feels like a native Ubuntu application. But shortly after, Widevine was being implemented on Linux, and this was no longer needed. Nowadays, if you just open up a regular web browser, assuming it's not like IceCat or something like that, and you go to the Netflix website, it is just going to work. It's not going to be perfect. You won't have things like 
4K streaming, for example, which is not a technical limitation on the Linux front. We support 4K screens, we support 4K YouTube, 4K works just fine everywhere else. Netflix just doesn't want to do it. And things like HDR don't work, but HDR just generally don't work anyway. But sometimes the old solutions don't just come back once, they come back again and again and again. I've heard you can get 4K by using Edge in Wine on Netflix. As far as I know, I think that's the best we have at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about random pieces of Linux history that nobody else besides me actually cares to look into. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe, subscribe, bear, pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me and I'm out.